Chad again. Thanks for stopping by. Um, the title of this video is The Mission House Knife Part 1. The, what the Mission House is and how it came to being in my videos was I heard Oliver Underwood, who is an assistant director, associate director of the Mission House, speak the other day at church. And I was kind of inspired. Uh, the Mission House is kind of a, a, a place where guys can get anchored down when they're having addiction issues. And they go there, go through the detox and, and or whatever it is that you're addicted to, you get off of that and uh, it gives you tons of people to talk with and deal with, it gives you a place to live and then they give you training, they give you job training and stuff so you can go out and do things. Um, there's a lot of, it's a long stretch, it's a long period of time, uh, these guys really pretty much dedicate themselves to this and there's a lot of people there to uh, uh, for support and having been in law enforcement I was always the person that was there to take the report, uh, write the paperwork, arrest the people, go to court. Uh, so now I thought, well, after hearing Oliver speak and hearing his story and everything, I thought, you know, there's, there's probably something that I could do for these guys to help them. And they have a benefit coming up soon and they're going to do a raffle and they're looking for things to raffle off. And so I approached Oliver about maybe, how about doing a, uh, me making them a knife and then they can raffle that off to raise money for the mission house. So he came by the other day and we talked over um, uh, shapes and scales and wood and, and uh, pins and liners and all sorts of stuff and, and I just uh, basically just piled it all on top of them and uh, we got through a bunch of stuff and we got some really cool scales that we're going to be putting on this knife as well as some really nice pins and it's going to be displayed really nice so I'm looking forward to this build. Um, the raffle, the benefit is going to be September 9th, 2017 and so I'm under the gun to try to get this done as fast as possible so we can get the pictures out and the video out to show everybody. Now when it comes to buying a raffle I don't know all the details yet because we just started this this week. It's, it's literally just the last couple of days we got this going. So I'm, gonna, I'm making this knife. I've got my production knife. I had those two. So I'm gonna take the production knife. I'm gonna drill a hole, uh, that hole bigger and the tang. I'm gonna go ahead and start tapering the tang, doing the profile. I got a couple other knives to hurry up and, and get in so I can fire up the kiln and get them all heat treated. And then we're going to go ahead and, and put scales on Oliver's knife, the Mission House knife, and get that going. Um, so I wanted to use this platform, both YouTube, Facebook, MeWe, Instagram. I wanted to use my platform to kind of bring everybody's attention to the Mission House. And uh, uh, see, you know, you can guys can look them up online at faithmissionhouse.org. You can see what they do. And uh, once we get the knife done, we'll have time to put pictures out. And I'll use this, this video series as well as you know my platforms to kind of bring light to the, what they're doing and raise money for the, for the organization. I think it's going to be around 5 or $10 a chance. I don't believe there's going to be a limit. But um, to get more details, I'll put them out on part two series. By then, I'll have more information from Oliver. But you can always contact them. Uh, you can look them up through faithmissionhouse.org. Uh, his contact information is in their email and phone number and stuff. So you can jump in there. Read about what they do. Contact him uh, if you got any questions about what you can do to help them out or what it might cost to get into this knife. <clears throat> Sorry, guys. So, without anything else further from me, I'm going to go ahead and get changed and uh, get back down here again and start cracking on this knife. And I'm going to take you guys along for this journey. We got it stamped, we got the preliminary plunge line as well as the mark where the scales are going to go. So now I got to get over here and start grinding away at it. And one thing to do is taper this tang. So let's get at it. Oh and real quickly, um, I follow a couple of channels. One of them is Wrangler Star, the other one's Alec Steele. And apparently uh, recently Alec was uh, brought up the topic about uh, personal protective equipment and I guess him and Wrangler Star mentioned each other and going back and forth. The one thing I wanted to add about that, if you guys follow their channels, they probably don't have a clue who I am, but uh, if you follow their channels, um, one's mentioning about how important it is to have PPE uh, and the other one is saying yes it is but it doesn't help to keep it locked in a box and blah blah blah. 
Well, as you guys know, in a recent video, probably a week before all this came out, I talked to you guys about PPE. It's really important. Well, one of the things probably neither one of them mentioned is our PPE here, but when you breathe in a PPE, in a mask like this, whether it's a full face or even just the, the ones that cover here, when you use it, you gotta hit it with some um, uh, rubbing alcohol and a paper towel or alcohol swabs, and you gotta wipe the inside out that actually touches your mouth that you're breathing in because when you breathe you leave moisture inside this and when you put it up and you put it away and you take it back out and you use it and you continually do that it creates microorganisms and bacteria inside the mask so you're protecting your lungs from the airborne environment that you're creating the negative airborne environment that you're creating but you're also breathing in some of the the, the crap that's inside your mask so it helps to at least every day before you use the mask get the alcohol wipe it down and let it set and dry and then you can use it throughout the day and then the next time you go to use it before you use it clean it all off um, Alec um, whether it's Cody at Wrangler Star whoever it would be you guys it's it's all good intentions Cody locking it up putting it away so it just stays clean and everything's in one place that's an awesome idea Alec I understand completely when it comes to your comments about um, hey if it's not there and I gotta go across the room or another room in the shop um, and I need it for that quick minute I don't do it I just do the work and then I get contaminated yes I can understand that but at the same token uh, you're trying to be very um, hurried up your videos are very fast you're putting out videos every day I can understand where you're coming from but you gotta make sure that you keep it clean and just laying it face down doesn't always do it because when you lay it face down or face up when you lay it like this you're laying it down on top of stuff that's already been contaminated and it gets in your face. Yes, you will breathe a little bit of it in it, but between that and the fact that you don't clean the mask daily and clean out that bacteria and everything that's inside there, that's going to cause you just as much problems. So what it's worth, guys, for everybody else watching this, if you do have a mask or if you're thinking about it, knife makers and such, make sure daily, if you're using it every day or the day, be you know, the day you're going to use it that morning, Go clean it out, set it to the side, rubbing alcohol cleans up fast, it's quick and easy, doesn't take a lot of time out of your day, and again, it's you. It's your health, it's your lungs, it's your face, it's your heart, it's your eyes. you got to protect them because nobody else will. Alright, off of my Safety Sally soapbox and let's get back to work. minutes later uh, probably would have went a little faster but I wanted to use up that one belt and it was getting pretty rough so that was 36 grit and then I went to 60 grit now I usually hit it with 120 a little further because um, the scales come up and around and I might go a little bit beyond where the scale goes because you got to make sure the scales will flop out like that so yep so the taper tang is done and uh, it's feeling really good right now so this uh, mission house knife is coming out really nice so far really pleased with that nice sharp tang. So I'm going to take a break for a second, stretch a little bit more. Uh, it gets a little rough uh, being over that grinder for 40 minutes as you can probably imagine. And uh, so next step is uh, I'm going to put on the guide and uh, get my plunge lines going and start working on the full flat. And then after that, that'll in the full flat will be taken to 120 grit. Um, possibly 220, but it's usually 120 grit and from there I take it to the, the, the uh, bench vise and I put it on my jig and then I, I hand polish everything and I take that to 400 grit and then it gets set off to the side for the kiln and then once it comes out of the kiln another 400 grit finish glue the scales on and then start shaping those and get going so uh, yeah so I'm gonna work on this a little bit more a little bit later on but I'm gonna go ahead and take a break for a second here and uh, as you can see my supervisors falling asleep on the job Yep, he's he's sound asleep now. I don't know how he does it. <laughs> he was 
I was grinding halfway through and I kick them out of here usually but it's it's in the upper 90s today and uh, I had the fan going and stuff like that but uh, he came in here to seek shelter from the the sun <laughs> uh, fell asleep on the floor while I was grinding I don't know how he does it but oh well I'll catch you in a little bit guys Uh, good thing I got time lapse, huh? I can edit stuff. That was uh, about 40 minutes, 45 minutes of grinding there. Got the flats down to 60 grit. Plunge lines are looking good, so I'm going to take a break, hit it to 120 and then 220, and clean it all up a little bit, show you guys what it looks like, and then it'll be hand sanding. Whoo boy! All right, break time again. Okay, guys. Whew. All right, so now we got this down. Let me get my towel here. Got the profile down to uh, 120 off the grinder, and at this point, I'll hand sand it um, to 220 and then to 400. But yeah, that's um, looking pretty good there. Nice taper tang. Good edge profile. Lined up really nice. Yeah, really liking that. Really good, really good feel like usual. So that's gonna be nice. So hopefully everybody's gonna enjoy this knife. Hopefully it's gonna bring up some good money. And uh, really look forward to the event and uh, seeing what comes out of this. Excellent. Well, until the next video, guys. Thank you for stopping by. Thank you for the support. Um, and uh, if you need any more information, again, jump over to the Mission House uh, link I got down here below. Go ahead and contact Oliver Underwood, and uh, you can see what you could do to maybe get your hands in this knife. So until the next video, guys, you take care. Thanks for stopping over. Don't forget, like, share, subscribe. Have a good one.